Next in the tank is a family who turned a hobby into a business. Hi Sharks, I'm Zach. I'm Zoe. I'm Cam. And I'm Summer. And we're the founders of Zach and Zoe's Sweepy Farm. And we're looking for $150,000 for 10% in equity. Did you know that most of the honey that you see in stores has actually been processed? All of that processing takes away the good stuff. Some even add in sugar and corn syrup. Zach and Zoe's Sweepy Farm is taking the sweetener industry by storm by changing the way people view bees and honey by creating a delicious twist on raw and filtered honey. No pesticides, no additives, just pure raw honey. From ginger to matcha to beetroot, we take raw honey and blend it with superfoods all in-house, no co-packer. We started this company by accident. Five years ago, we were looking for a way to solve our son's allergies. And when we found raw honey, it was a game changer for Zach because it actually contains pollen, which has a variety of health benefits. And we don't just sell our honey, we farm it ourselves. We started out with a few hives and grew it to a full facility that our whole family cares for. The quality of our honey and the health of our bees is so important to us. So sharks, who wants to continue the buzz and join our hive of busy bees? <laughs> so is this all your honeys? Do you make all these varieties right here in front of us? We do. We make all of our honey in-house in a facility in Lebanon, New Jersey. Wow. And we take care of 50 hives ourselves. And we actually source a lot of our honey, about 80% from local farms right by our doorstep. How did you become bee farmers. Zachary had horrible allergies. Um, he was in and out of the hospital. Yep. We started keeping bees for him. We, it was a hobby for my husband, yep. so we were able to treat Zachary within a year, and we saw that one spring went by, the next went by, and here he was with no symptoms of allergy-induced um, asthma. I think you should tell us what yes. we're eating, because we're already chowing it down. I wanted to add an extra flair to the honey, so I began to add organic superfoods into the honey. Beetroot, uh, ginger, matcha. Awesome. Blueberry is like phenomenal. Oh, thanks. Great. Thanks, Mark. I think I've seen this. Has this been in restaurants or out? It has. It is. Yep. Okay. So we were, you know, our wholesale accounts, we were uh, working with uh, Macy's to pick this up, uh, Bloomingdale's. I mean, we've had a lot of press. We've been in New York Times. 2018, our sales were $62,000. 2019, $135,000. In 2020, $401,000. Wow. And in 2021, we're already at $888,000. Yeah, wow. baby. Yeah. Now you're talking. Wow. Yeah. You said you're already at $800,000. Yep. Okay, so. Break that down between wholesale, retail, yep. and um, direct-to-consumer. Pre-pandemic, we were 70% of our business was Chelsea Market, right in New York, retail traffic. And then during the pandemic, we had to pivot and really invest in our website, direct and direct-to-consumer. And so right now, we do 70% of our business direct-to-consumer, right website. from our site. And that's you. We're not advertising. Okay, what is one of these costs, and what does it cost you to make? Our 60-ounce jar, we make it for $6. It wholesales for 13 and it retails nice. for 20. How do your prices compare to the other honey makers out there? They're a little more. Um, other By honey makers are about fifteen dollars for per um, about 16 twelve ounce. inch, yeah, twelve or sixteen ounces when you look them up, so but there's nothing you're else. You're charging in about it. a twenty-five percent premium. Yeah. Because of this organic superfoods from the best farm. We just got accepted to Target's 2021 incubator program. We're gonna do 1.5 million this year, we think pretty easily. What's gonna accelerate you to that? Target's a big one. So how are you gonna be able to deal with that? Because going from $880,000 a year to having one really big customer yep. takes a real commitment in cash. Yep. Are you profitable, first of all? Yes. Yeah, 23% margins. 23% margins, so income. you're making about 200K um, so far this year, yep. right? You know, I in my industry, we buy enormous amounts of honey. There's a huge problem with bee colony collapse. Yep where huge swipes of bees yeah, we've have had a died, that. and Heroic. bees are the number one pollinator. If we lose our bees, vegetable crops, fruits, we're gonna be in huge trouble. And tell us a little bit about how you see your role in that ecosystem, and do you have a strategy related to that? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, us having bees is a differentiator, right? We've got 50 hives on our property in New Jersey, and so we do a lot of talks around beekeeping, bee health. So this is so much more than a company. It's like a mission. Yeah. I, I want to ask Zach a question. Um, bees, they work very hard to make this honey so they can eat it. You go in there and rip it off and sell it. <laughs> they, don't, they don't even, <laughs> they don't even, they don't even get a royalty or anything. They don't have any equity in your business. They don't. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Every beekeeper kind of has a rule. They don't take a certain amount. Like they don't take, never take too much honey. Go Zach. Uh, 
I see a future with you, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> the challenge I see, though, is in the scaling. You're trying to just add your biggest customers right now, yep. early in your life cycle. I think that's going to be more difficult than you're giving it credit for. Knowing yep. what I know about food supply chains, yep. it's one thing to get to five million, which, yeah, right? Yep. Another thing to get to 10, yeah. But now, all of a sudden, the complexity levels change. I don't know that you're accounting for the complexity level, and so for those reasons, I'm out. Listen, guys, I'm struggling to find a role to fit in here because it really does feel to me like a family business. And I, I think it'd be uncomfortable for me to like jump in there uh, at this stage. So for those reasons, I'm out. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. And thank you, Mark. My biggest struggle is on the product side because I'm a person who doesn't eat honey. Oh, wow. I know that sounds oh, wow. crazy, but I actually really don't. So sadly, for those reasons, I am out. But Thank I you, hope Lori. that oh, one of my you. fellow so sharks sweet. is in. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You guys remind me so much, in fact, identical to Wicked Good Cupcakes. It was a family business because mm. it was always for their kids. And when they did sell it recently to Hickory Farms, everybody made millions of dollars. Wow. They were just like you. I like this deal. I'm gonna make you the exact same offer I made them nine years ago when they were standing right there. Zero equity, you have enough margin in the larger jars to pay me a dollar royalty against the 150 I'll I give you. I knew you were gonna say that. And after, <laughs> I, recoup, <laughs> after I recoup the 150,000, it drops down to 25 cents. That's the identical deal. And then we worked together to blow up sales, as I did with Wicked Good Cupcakes. We ended up with commercial kitchens all over the country. Yep. And we blew it up because we were both incentivized. I never took equity, and when it got sold, I did well too. Everybody made money. I don't think there's room for equity because in the end, this deal's for your kids. Hold on, guys, I have an offer. My dream entrepreneur is when they remind me of me. Like somebody who started with nothing that made a little magic and stayed on course and built an empire. So you might not think you're sitting on an empire, but I could see it as clear as I could see tomorrow. So I'm gonna make you probably uh, a juicier offer than you were looking for, <laughs> uh, but I need to have more equity. So I'm gonna give you $200,000 for 20%. All right. but I am excellent at strategy on building brand. I'm an excellent marketer. I don't have to sell you on that because I have proven it with so many of my brands. $200,000 for 20%, Mr. Wonderful. Zero equity, because you're a family business. And that's Sam, are you, are you evaluating his royalty deal? So you understand you're adding like 13% every single jar you sell at the beginning. 13% weight. You know like why shackles. I'm coming over? Because you're things can yellow, sometimes be so wanna... obvious. Let, let's show Kevin what's <laughs> happening here. <laughs> He's not impressed. Who fits in? Barbara, I have no interest in doing that. a deal with you in it. Well, it's a simple question. Do you want to part with 20% of your equity? Can we huddle? Can we huddle? We need to huddle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we can huddle. Go ahead. You, you, understand, <laughs> you understand both offers, right? Yes, you talk absolutely. To, you talk to any of my partners. I'm a different kind of cloth than Kevin. Okay, can we huddle in there? Yeah, we can. Yeah. We, we, can. <laughs> we love it. Oh, I'll let you huddle on your own. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Twenty percent. I'll kill you if you get this deal. I mean, who's going to help? I mean, Mr. Wonderful or Barbara, right? Barbara, 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 Barbara. I don't know. That the Wicked Cupcake thing was brilliant. What a wholesome family. Well, so, what have you decided? We came in asking for 150,000 for 10%. Barbara, would you be willing to consider 200K for 12%? 15, I would. You got a deal. Good job. Great, I need to justify great. Well done. Thank you, Kevin. I'm very, no very problem. happy. What a proud parents we can do they are. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. My pleasure. Thank you. Can't wait to get together. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Well Congrats, done. Congrats, guys. All right, guys. <laughs> nice job.